Hey! Whenever I make a video about kart racers now, people always seem to ask me for one game. Crash Team Racing. I understand, uh, not only a lot of people have a lot of nostalgia for Crash, but CTR might actually be the best kart racer ever made. It's usually on the top of lists of the best kart racer games, in front of other giants like Mario Kart, Diddy Kong Racing and Toy Story Racer. That one is really good, trust me. Everyone I knew growing up loved Crash, and for a good reason. So I decided to make a video on the Crash racing game everyone knows. Crash Nitro Kart. Uh, okay, I know, I know. Here he comes again making jokes and not giving us the video we want. But CTR is still kind of fresh in my mind after I played it not so long ago. So I have to wait until it wears off so I can get a new perspective on it. So for now, I was curious to see why I didn't like Nitro Kart. I remember this being the CTR's younger brother that none of my friends cared about. And when I played it, I just didn't find it very appealing. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna take a look at Crash Nitro Kart and see if I misjudged it. Or is it actually the most boring game on planet Earth? Oh, also uh, one thing. This week was supposed to be Midnight Club 3. But because the game's so long and I didn't have enough time for it, it'll be pushed for next month. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't so you don't miss it. It's gonna be a good time. I know, I know what you're gonna say. Blue Tag, you should make a video on crashing racing first. And I agree, I probably should. But I was really curious to see how this game was, so I decided to start with this one. Don't worry though, we will play CTR at some point. The story here is that one day, Crash and the team were chilling at their home, when a strong light came from the sky. The light abducted them somewhere, and we then see that somewhere else in the world, Cortex is trying to come up with a new idea on how to defeat the Bandicoots. When the same light comes and abducts him, Tiny and Engine, they are transported to some kind of coliseum in space and are introduced to the Emperor Villo 27th, an alien who goes to different places gathering people and forcing them to race, otherwise he destroys their planet. Here we are free to select our team. We can pick from Team Bandicoot, which consists of Crash, Coco and Crunch, or from Team Cortex, containing Cortex, Engine and Tiny. They confront Velo, who says they will be racing across four different worlds. And if they win, they can challenge the galactic champion for their freedom. Otherwise, if they refuse to race, he'll simply destroy Earth. The first world is Terra, a place that closely resembles Earth. You'll notice that it also resembles crashing racing a lot. You have a hub where you can drive around and select which races you want to play. Each world having four different races, three different tracks and a boss that you must race after you win the other three. I think it's fair for us to talk about the visuals of this game to start. You know, there was something about the PS2 era of Crash games that always made me think ew whenever I saw him in games. My mind keeps telling me that Crash looks too round and I know this is a heavy nitpick because it's still the same Crash from the PS1 but in HD. But if I had to point out the main reason I got pushed away from even giving this a fair chance, it would be the design. And if you're saying, oh, blue tag, that's a very stupid reason, let me remind you, dear viewer, that in Japan, Crash had a completely different design, a more rounded one, I might add, that they believed would appeal more to the Japanese people than the pointy design. The graphics actually don't look bad. There's a lot of cool details wherever you look at, like the moon in the hub having Velo's face in it, the sun rays coming from the sky, or how the rain falls from below when you're upside down on this level. Small things like that are nice and really show that some care has been put into the game. If there's one thing I can say scrap is some of the pictures of the characters they got. I mean, poor Crunch looks like he's been using his nose before getting into the race. Pura looks like he's sad for being forced to race and let's just not talk about poor Dingo Dio here. You also get a huge variety on tracks here. There aren't a lot, again it's only 3 per world, but the ones that are there always feel different from each other. No tracks play or look the same. If anything, I think the only problem is that a lot of it looks like they took too much inspiration from CTR, to the point where I even thought some of the tracks were the same ones just ported to this game. Like Inferno Island, it has the same looks as the first level on CTR. This icy one, this one that's underwater, the one where the roads look like the one from Crash 3, every seems to be based off CTR. 
and I think that kind of holds this game back a bit. The gameplay here also isn't bad. The cars do feel a bit slow, but after you get the hang of it, you'll be flying through the levels, no problem. You have your shortcuts that are pretty advanced, just like in CTR, which is a very welcome return. They take timing and skill to get through, and missing them means that you'll probably be pushed back to last, so the risk and reward is on point. The only weird thing when considering that is that the game is actually pretty easy. Not only the AI seems to wait for you near the finish line, but they also added a team mechanic to this game where, after charging your team meter, you can activate it and you'll get random items non-stop, which you can spend to get past your enemies. Not gonna lie, uh, not a big fan of this one. It seems like they added it just to have something new to the game, but I honestly only used it like 4 times in the entire playthrough. It is not that useful because you get things like the cannonballs which explode on your second circle press, meaning you can't spam it too much, but again, most of the time you'll be in first place and far from your opponents. There's also the new addition of the magnetic tracks, where your wheels will turn sideways and you'll be able to drive on walls and upside down. I'm pretty sure it's on Mario Kart 8 now too, and I'll also be nitpicky here and say that it wasn't that fleshed out yet. Sometimes your car will bump into the road itself and slow you down and the physics change a bit too much, making the game feel worse than just driving on the road. I mean, what's the point of having it if it's just worse? The music. The game features a composed soundtrack and they are pretty good. Every level has its own track composed by Todd Mastin, who also works on Spongebob Globs of Doom, Cars Racerama and, more recently, a game called ReCore, which I haven't played myself but heard a lot of it. After winning every race in every world and defeating every boss, we finally get to challenge the galactic champion, Vilo himself. He transforms the arena to become a racetrack and we then start the last race. Vilo drives with two companions that keep throwing things at you during the race. This track would be my favorite, if it wasn't for the amount of jumps they added where you can barely have any space to drift and a lot of sections that are just driving straight because of it. But there's one of my favorite shortcuts in the game here and trust me, you'll need it. It really seems like the whole difficulty was pushed to this race and it shows. After you win, you get a cutscene of Vilo congratulating you, saying you won your freedom. However, when Coco asks to be sent home, he says he can't do it, because he's gonna destroy it. The deal was that if they wanted their freedom, they would have to race. But because they won and stopped racing, he'll destroy Earth anyway. Of course, you then make a second challenge with him, where if you win again, he'll leave Earth alone. And here we go again, beat the entire game again, three more times. Yeah, uh, this game is not screwing around. Not only you have to go back and do all the races again, gathering the C and K letters hidden in all the tracks, but you also have to do all the races again in a time trial, and beat all the races again in different cups to then get a chance to race Velo again. It took me about four hours though. It's not. It's it's not that bad, but it would be better to at least have some extra tracks here. After winning again, Velo explodes in a wave of rage, revealing that he was a robot. The real Velo was a small alien creature that can't even hold his scepter. Crash then thinks of using it to become the new emperor, but decides that it would be too boring. He gives Velo back his scepter and they are sent back to Earth, being finally left alone. Until the next game, I guess. If you played with Team Cortex, however, you get a different ending where Cortex tries to use the scepter to go back to Earth, when it breaks and sends them to Terra instead. Tiny fixes the scepter and becomes the new king of the land, leaving them lost in their new home. I gotta say, this really wasn't too bad. Besides some nitpicks I have, the gameplay is still solid and fun. The biggest problem this game had was being a successor to Crash Team Racing. If you never played the original game, trust me, it's 
that good. I mean, at least from what I remember. Having to make a new game in a different platform with a completely new team, also being a new game that will no doubt be compared to what's considering by many the best kart racer of all time is a hell of a challenge. But if you do your best to look at this game as its own, I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun with it. And yeah, I guess that's it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like, it really helps me a lot. And also a huge thank you for our new members, Shuhu's101 and Taylor Ramsey. Being a member really helps me keep doing this video, so thank you so much. But yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.